Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV D Res. This is Neon, aka Tom Pratt. And joining me this week is Mr. Mike Phelan. Say How you hello, doing? Mike. Hey. Uh, Mike is a longtime contributor to clownfishtv.com. Believe it or not, we actually have a website. Uh, you need to go to the website. Please go to the website. Uh, but uh, yeah, so Mike is also an avid toy collector, and we're going to be discussing the utter state of Hasbro. Uh, Hasbro is not what it once was, right? It's uh, it's kind of a mess. Its stock price is nowhere near where it used to be. It just dropped. They got downgraded uh, Wednesday. I think it dropped yep. on Wednesday. Yep. And um, it's crazy. So we're going to talk about all this. Uh, again, wherever you find this podcast, Please, for the love of God, subscribe, whether it's, uh, you know, Spotify or Rumble, YouTube. Uh, where else are we at? We're going to be on uh, Amazon Music. We're on uh, Apple, wherever it is. Please subscribe. Do us do us a favor. I'm going to let Mike introduce himself and talk about his toy collecting habit. I know he has one. <laughs> I, I'm envious of his collection. And uh, he's going to tell you what all he's into. So go ahead, Mike. I've uh, been collecting since, actually since I was about four years old. Uh, it's partially the, uh, it, it partially started with my aunt. She started collecting for me Star Wars toys, the the original Kenner yeah, yeah. Uh, original trilogy toy. It's like every time she'd find something, she would get it for me. And it just spiraled where I had nearly everything. And then it just became a thing where like if I was missing something from my collection, I had to have it. And then it kicked back up again when Kenner release the power mm -hmm. of four stories. I was like, well, now I can start it correctly. I won't be taking them out of the box. I'll be keeping them in there. And I had the walls of my rooms were just full of every, all the blister cards and everything. And then I just started, I started liking just how the toys were made when, yeah. um, when McFarlane started uh, McFarlane toys and he, they, that suddenly kicked up the quality of what toys mm -hmm. would look like and what they could be. They couldn't only, they, they weren't only for kids, but they were for what I was at the time was a teen. And then they just start pushing those boundaries of like being either bloodier or more detailed or more articulation and just the engineering of it, which my real job, I am an engineer. So I just started loving just the way toys are made and what you could do with them. And before we knew it, the toy collecting business just took off in oh, the yeah. 2000s yeah. When, when Geek Chic became the thing. And then everyone was making toys and toys were getting so much different, so much mm. better. And then something happened. <laughs> something happened within the past five years that just turned me off as a collector. And we'll get into one of the reasons why. It's mainly the, the company we're talking about. But I just I just love collectibles, the engineering that's put into them, the craft mm -hmm. of making them. Things like, like the Proton Pack there. That's a glorified toy. <laughs> yeah. Everything behind yeah. me is a toy. Yeah. And... It, the way they look, the, the memories they bring back. There's just so much power in uh, in collectibles and in toys that you know you, you try to you try to grasp onto that part of your childhood that you no longer have. And there's that little bit of magic left in that plastic that just just does it. Just just helps you not feel like you're slowly hurtling towards death. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it's it's amazing what that can do. I almost feel like uh, you know sometimes when I see especially like a retro toy. Mm -hmm. I, I think of the scene in Ratatouille with the critic where he takes a bite of Ratatouille and he's like transported back to being a, a little kid and the feelings associated with that. And I kind of get that with, you know, I mean, it's nostalgia bait. I know it is, but a lot of these like really overpriced figures. I'm a sucker for like the Kenner style figures, like the, uh, the reaction toys. Mm -hmm. And I see them on that, that card that could have existed in the 1980s. And I'm like, yeah, I feel like I'm eight. I feel like I'm eight years old again. Look at these things. I mean, we used to have – people don't realize, like, back in the day, talking about Star Wars, we had entire aisles of Star mm -hmm. Wars. Like, yeah. you can look these pictures up. I know it's hard to believe, but uh, listen to these old men. We had entire yeah. walls of Star Wars toys, and then on the end cap, they'd usually have, like, a diorama or something with, like, the the at, -At walker and the mm -hmm. snow speeder and stuff like that. And uh, same with G.I. Joe. It was floor to ceiling with what one toy line. And now, like Star Wars is like this, you know, in a Walmart. It's 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 crazy, um, but yeah, I get that nostalgic feeling, you know, going to toy shows. I mean, we, we're going to PowerCon again this year. We went last year; it was fantastic, and uh, that's a con that is dedicated to just the love of toys. And there's so many smaller uh, toy companies out there that are 
you know, they're guys like us, you know, that they, they grew up loving toys and they, they know you get those uh, warm fuzzies from that piece of plastic and they, they cater to that collector market. And it's really awesome because now they're making their own stuff. And I do feel that in some ways, um, the independent toy companies love toys more than Hasbro and Hasbro is the biggest toy company in the world. So let's talk about what's going on with Hasbro. Mike, you've, I know you've been kind of covering it on the blog a little bit. Yeah. Uh, not so much, not so much recently. I've kind of cut back a little bit because mainly because the, the quality of Hasbro's merchandise is taking a huge nosedive since 2021. And one of the reasons is because in 2021, I believe it was August or November, they announced that they were going to go plastic free or as much as possible Yeah, with windowless packaging. Now you're producing toys like Star Wars toys, Indiana Jones, that are made for collectors. They are at the collector's mm -hmm. price range of $20 plus. You cannot see them, and the only representation of the figure on the front is a CGI. It's a rendered model. It's not the actual thing. You can't see the thing. It's not until you break the break the tape and open it up and ruin whatever value there was in opening up and seeing what it is. And both you and I have experienced the terrible, terrible paint jobs on Hasbro toys that they have now because they can hide it. Yeah. Yeah. They can hide it from um, yeah. And that, that's what that's been my opinion anyway, that I think the reason that they hide the toys is because the quality is just not there. I know the D and D mm -hmm. figures in particular were awful. They fell apart. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. I picked up some of the uh, power Ranger Zords cheap at Ollie's and I didn't even know if they were action figures to be honest, mm -hmm. because the, the packaging, it was a, like a VHS. I'm like, is is this an action figure? Is this a statuette? Is this I, like, I didn't even know what it was pleasantly surprised that the quality was decent. I didn't feel ripped off. I only paid three 99 each. So I was like, okay, that's, that's good. And I'm going to open these suckers up and display them. Cause I only paid, you know, three or $4 each, but yeah, I mean, I've got limited edition figures. I bought, they're still in the box. I don't know if they're actually in the box for all I know. Mm -hmm. It's a box of box of broken glass. I have no idea what's in the box. You can you know? talk to you could talk to loss prevention at a target and they'll tell you that people will open up the boxes, take out the figure, and just throw something else in. They put they don't use any kind of special tape. It's just regular clear tape. They just put it back over, take it back. No one's gonna be any the wiser. So so the thing that the thing that gets me about the uh the packaging is that argument doesn't hold a lot of, of weight anyway, because there is recycled plastic. Mm -hmm. Like you could put a window recycled plastic and i'm like no you're you're obviously up to something you're up to hiding the quality that's that's got to be what it is because i know other toy companies use plastics and it's not about the environment uh i mean you're talking about a bunch of toys that are going to wind up in a freaking landfill because nobody's gonna buy them and you're worried about the environment for a piece of freaking you know window like that that's all it takes mm -hmm. i mean like these guys here these are uh my uh beast box toys this is my transformers replacement but like look at that that's not a lot of plastic right you can just and other than that the box is pretty decent but yeah i mean everybody else is using it it's it's it, it, whatever the new <laughs> whatever tra the newer been. transformers figures that they're they've been producing for the past maybe two years don't have any they're still open you can still see the figure there's no plastic why not I know it kind of sucks not having a protective covering over your premium action figure, but do something premium. or at least have a fold out, yeah. have a fold out uh, or have a sleeve or have a, have a, uh, like a book cover opening or something, anything, anything is better than paying 25 to $30 and then never seeing it. I mean, uh, NECA toys are roughly about the same price. Some are getting closer to $40, yeah. But they still use plastic, and their their packaging is immaculate, and their figures are, have some of the best, best paint jobs on the market right now on the consu on just a like a regular box store consumer market, and the build quality is not that great. But you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy like the creep show figure that I reviewed for Clownfish. It's great. I think it was thirty five dollars, but I can compare that to uh, probably the last GI Joe figure I bought, uh, Rondo. And he just looks like a plastic toy, and they're the same price. And yeah, you compare them to one to each other. Like one has real craftsmanship in it; the other one just looks like a resin printed toy with that with some basic splashes of wash on there, and they just threw it out. The, yeah, let's uh, let's talk to, about you're, that. You're going to need to work for my money now. <laughs> 
Well, let's, yeah, because there are a lot of options, right? So I, I've got some props. Uh, for those of you listening to the audio version, you're not gonna see, I'm going to try to describe them for you. All right. So this is, um, this is a Legends uh, sound wave yep. from about three or four years ago, right? Now, for a $10 toy, he's pretty nice. I mean, he's got the, you know, basically uh, uh, the stickers, the stickers, and he's got, you know, fully painted laser beak. And, uh, you know, again, for a small... So if I can get him out of here without tripping over my stuff, you know, I mean, I didn't feel ripped off 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. This was like, I want to say three, three years ago. Um, fast forward to this year and I picked up hot rod. Um, he's, he's really red. I mean, that's, that's basically it. He's just a chunk of red plastic with a little bit of yellow. I mean, all of this should be gray and yellow if you want to go for the G1. Um, you'd think they'd make his legs silver. They, they didn't bother. You know, I mean, just a, a definite notice in uh, a drop in the, the pain applications. And I've noticed this with the, the new figures coming out, new Transformers coming out. Anyway, all the figures they're, they're picking are, are just like one solid color. Mm -hmm. Like everybody's all excited. They're like, oh my God, we're finally getting this guy. It's like, yeah, like everybody's getting excited about the G2 Transformers. I'm like, yeah, because they're like one solid color. You know, they're like day glow green or something. It's like, it's a really easy paint app. Why are you getting excited? And it's going to be like $55. I mean, seriously, seriously. Uh, and they're starting to get into the Armada, the Armada line too. And that's almost the same thing. That Optimus yeah. Prime is strictly red with, I think, silver pipes and that's it. He doesn't have a bunch of color to him. And if they no, do yeah, Megatron, he's got I think gold. Megatron's almost solid gray. Gray and green and purple, I think. Yeah, because yeah, the Armada, they were they were very chunky. That's actually my my second favorite Transformers line. But these are knockoffs. These are uh machine machine boy. You can't see this. These are from China. <laughs> machine boy toys. Uh they are called Transform Naze Transform Naze Five. Uh this guy here, he's not jazz, he's clancy. <laughs> And uh, his paint application, I swear to God, is better than Hot Rods. This guy was two bucks. This this is Ratchet. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not Ratchet. It's Dr. Moo. All right. And uh, then we've got, you know, my my favorite here is, uh, it's not Optimus. He's, uh, he's Infinite. Infinite Prime. And uh, again, these look like they could be current year Hasbro figures. And these were like two bucks each. You know, I mean, it's it's pretty pathetic, right? I can't tell the difference between a Hasbro toy and a knockoff. Who do we really blame for that? I mean, do we blame Takara Tomy or do we blame Hasbro? The Takara toys are fine. We actually, I actually get the Takara toys and they're they're fine. The paint applications are much better. Uh, I think Hasbro, my personal opinion is they got too close to the sun. They were chasing movie deals. They were chasing TV deals. They wanted to be a Disney. They wanted to be a media company, and toys were secondary. Uh, toys were kind of like a chore. They had to produce toys, and they got burnt on a lot of properties, too. I mean, we can go back. I think when the damage really started was Star Wars. Yep. You know, They got burnt on Star Wars. Star Wars was their bread and butter for, for boys' toys for years, and even – you know, during the Clone Wars, like when we had uh, downtime between movies, those toys always sold. They always mm -hmm. sold. Even the most ridiculous, stupid aliens, stupid looking droids, whatever, blocky, boxy, cartoony clone troopers, all that stuff sold. You never saw it on clearance. Fast forward to the day you go to an Ollie's Bargain outlet and there are piles and piles and piles of Force Awakens and Last Jedi figures and now Mandalorian figures. I was shocked. Uh, I went last week and there was a, a, an end cap full of Mando figures. You know, the, they can't the give it away. Yeah. The, well, also their distribution model right now sucks. The The 40th anniversary return of the Jedi figures, the 3.75 ones, I only ever find them at uh, GameStop. They're not at Target. They're not at Walmart. And I live in a huge city where there's mm -hmm. 10 Walmarts and, you know, seven yeah. Targets all within 10 miles. And you go all around, they're like, oh, here, here's like 10 Landos and like 10 Ahsokas, but nothing else. And so you have to really dig to try to find the figures you want that are brand new or are supposed to be out, but you can't find them anywhere. And it's starting to be like that with the Transformers as well, like the movie figures. I had to travel all over the place just to find one hot rod. And then 
they still haven't put out a Megatron. And I don't even know if I'm going to keep collecting by the time they get around to the last few figures from the 86 movie line because yeah. I can't find them anywhere. What's yeah. what's the point? But hell, I could find all I could find the Dungeons and Dragons movie figures no problem. <laughs> Michelle Rodriguez Nobody wants is them. Michelle Rodriguez <laughs> no. is is warming all those pegs that could be yeah, used for yeah. something people want. A movie that God. people actually want to go see. Did, did you see that stupid Nerf gun, that D&D Nerf gun? It was like a dragon that shot darts mm-hmm. out of its mouth. God, it was horrible. Like, I mean, that's the thing, too. I, I, I feel like with Hasbro, um, it's not just the toy quality, but like I don't, I don't think as a company they know who or what they are. They just keep mashing up these brands. Like we've got a whole bunch of IP. We're basically Disney at this point. We're like the Disney of toys we have a bunch of legacy IP and we're just going to mash them up. We're going to put some transformers and magic, the gathering, and we're going to do freaking star Wars, potato heads. And you know, those are kind of cool, but you know what I'm saying? Like they're just constantly my little pony, they're transformers now too, or they're D and D now too. Okay. Now we're going to, we're going to mash. It's like freaking Oreos now, right? Like all those weird ass mm-hmm. flavors of Oreos. Okay. Now we're going to do D and D nerf or uh, I'm surprised they haven't done like, you know, uh, my little pony twister or some crazy, you know, something like that. And that, they're doing it, you know, Mon- Monopoly and all this other, you know, uh, Twister for furries. Uh, I can bronies. I can only imagine the smell of of My Little Pony oh Twister at a Brony Con. Oh God! Oh God! Oh God. Oh. Like Dash Con, right? Uh. Um, but uh, you know, I just I don't I don't think they know what they are now. And I think honestly, the the death of Brian Goldner I think really threw him for a loop because one nobody knew he was sick, so there was like mm-hmm. no plan of succession at all the guy had cancer didn't tell anybody until like a week before he died hey i've got cancer and i might not be here um but his whole thing was he was trying to set hasbro on this path to be a media company and then after he passes all of a sudden now they're selling off e1 and now they're trying to divest themselves of this thing or that thing and now they've got people in from microsoft they're running it they're like okay we're gonna be a game company that's what we are. We're going to be a video game. Co- We're going to turn D and D into a shitty mobile app because we can with a bunch of, you know, uh, in-app purchases. And, uh, then we're going to, you know, we're really going to push magic hard. And, but I don't think they care about toys. I think in all of this, like to them, I think the toys are secondary. Now it used to be, mm-hmm. they were a toy company first and foremost. Now the toys are secondary to, becoming uh you know fodder for games fodder for movies and now that whole thing's kind of blown up in their faces too because they're not doing so hot you know the movies so um and their stock's taking a hit and uh, people oh, yeah. are complaining complaining about you know magic the gathering they're overproducing cards people are finding cards in landfills you know because that was their golden goose and i just i i personally just don't think they have the direction they need right now to, they need somebody that actually has a passion for toys, and they, they just don't have it. They don't have it. I think the collector's market is also swaying away from Star Wars and from yeah. Transformers. I don't I don't think it's there. I, I think that collectible market has moved on to something else. Uh, I think they've also moved past NECA, and I think it's it's going back to being more specialized. Like not even i don't even think super seven for as much as they churn out i don't think anyone's interested in thundercats anymore i think finally our generation is no longer the generation to sell to which i think so oh go ahead i, I, just, uh, I think it's gonna get i think it's gonna get it's gonna move on to whatever was really hot in the late 90s i think that's going to be the next the next generation that they're going to pivot towards so honestly, I think I think Star Wars as a brand is dead. Um, I think GI Joe is also dead. It's just a we're not we're not spending the we're not spending the money right now. It's a terrible time mm-hmm. to be a collector because everything is so expensive, and spending thirty dollars for a figure that's going to sit on a shelf could easily buy one steak in Florida right now. Uh, so yeah, uh, so I just. It's just that that market, I think, is is tanking, and the the bigger companies that are chasing it. I think are starting to realize that they're not going to make money off yeah. of making these thirty forty dollar figures, and that's also showing with the um, with the crowdfunding campaigns. The only ones that are really nailing it have to be something that a whole bunch of people can get behind, like the sale barge 
I was not surprised that that thing succeeded. The hiss on mm. on uh, has on Haslab, I was surprised that did, because when I yeah. think about the hiss, like, I, do I really want a hiss that's made for a one six scale figure? And, but that blew past in like a couple days. The proton pack, I was also surprised that that made it. it I just I, but I think now collectors market is going to see a huge downturn, and the major companies will ditch it. But the smaller ones that made their money or make their living off of it will keep going. We'll see more from uh, Tom McFarlane, more from NECA and Super 7. But I think all the big ones, even Mattel, if this Jurassic Park one fails, I don't think they're going to go back into it. Yeah, yeah. it's um, Mattel's interesting, too, because they were kind of trying to chase entertainment. Now, we'll see how the Barbie movie does. <laughs> but uh, they've been, like, all over the place, too. But, no, that was actually my question, Uh and I apologize. I mean, to cut you off was like, no who, who are they going to market to next? Because mm -hmm. the generation after us isn't really in the toys like like we no. were, you know. And I think that's that's one of the problems we're having too. Uh, you know, with kids, I think the reason they were milking the collectors so hard is, like, I know my kids. They were not into action figures that much. My son was when he was little. He was really he had uh, rescue heroes. He was really into those and the uh, little uh, Star Wars guys. And I think. Um, I forgot Galactic Heroes. We had a mm -hmm. bunch of those yep. and he liked those. Uh, but I think, you know, that was one of those things where I think we bought them because I also like them. So I got to play Star Wars, you know, with them. But as he hit like eight, nine, 10 years old, he was already out of toys. Like mm -hmm. he was on his iPad, he was playing video games. Uh, he just was not into the same stuff, you know, we were into. But kids, they have a lot more options too. I mean, they have infinite infinite options you have infinite options for entertainment you know you don't have to make up your own stories in your head playing with your gi joes in the sandbox because video games ipads you know the internet you can scan your you can scan your figure in with ar and use it for something yeah yeah it's it's crazy it's just a different time uh you mentioned gi joe that i had i had did i show you these before i picked this up at uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cam showed me those. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. So, um, funny story. I was, I was gonna, I was gonna knock Aaron out of his chair, but he couldn't. Aaron Sparrow, he couldn't make it. But uh, so these guys, th this is an original carded Duke, um, and I've got a, a, a Dusty too. And a funny story. I found them in an antique mall, and you'll never believe what I paid for them. Actually, you would because I think I told you uh, they were like thirty bucks each. That's uh, that's just not bad. No, it was a pretty good price, you know. I mean, I had to haggle a little bit uh, <laughs> to get them down. No, actually, what happened? What well, I don't know what happened because um, that particular vendor at that antique mall had a bunch of other '80s, '90s toys, and they were dead on with their pricing, like you know mm -hmm. what they're going for on eBay. And these guys, the only thing I can think is they thought they were the reissues, the 25th anniversary, because that's about what the reissues are going for is about mm -hmm. thirty-five to fifty dollars. I'm like, that that Duke is like worth that Duke's worth a lot of money, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, they weren't that, they were just like on the shelf. I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. They got an extra 10% off too. <laughs> so that was, that was pretty cool. But no, I think, I think what's going on now is like our generation, we are in a place right now where we can either buy back our childhoods and we can have the toys that we never had as kids. You know, like I, I finally can have that Voltron. I always wanted. I never had, <laughs> had the Volt, but I can buy them if I want them. Mm -hmm. and I've got them. And, uh, you know, or we're in a position where we can have those dream toys made like the Unicron to scale, mm -hmm. you know, the $600 Unicron or the big ass Castle Grayskull and Snake Mountain, all these big, you know, five, $600 toys. These are things that we dreamed of as kids. We wish we could have. But I think once you buy back the parts of your childhood that are important, you don't really need anything else. You know, if, if you're in it for nostalgia, and you're in it because it makes you feel like a kid again. And you want to buy, like, I only need to have a sound wave. I only need to have, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of my favorite Joes, GI Joes. I don't need the whole damn collection. I want a couple of my favorite vehicles, a couple of my favorite characters, you know, to display. Maybe a nice version of them or something. Or like these guys here, they're carded. And that's all I need. I mean, I'm, what am I going to do with you know, a stock room full of freaking toys. You know, I just, I just need enough, I guess, just to be able to get that hit of nostalgia and then I'm good, you know, I'm good. And and that's kind of like, I even told my wife, I'm like, I think with the, the Hasbro with Transformers, I think after the Armada, cause I love Armada, Armada is like my second favorite line. Um, 
after I grab those figures, I think I'm done. Like there's, I can't really think of any, they've already released every character in versions better than we could have possibly had them or thought of having them as kids, especially the movie transformers. Cause people don't remember the, the original movie transformers were dog shit. Yeah. They were like the worst fucking transformers that started the decline of the whole freaking line when Hasbro decided to make its own transformers and kind of, you know, they had to car engineer them, but they, you could tell they didn't care. Mm-hmm. You look at Blur. You look at Blur, and you tell me that Takara really, really cared how close they were to the the movie. They didn't care. So now that we got those like primo versions of these characters, we don't really need anything else. So if you're gonna still collect toys, I feel like it's gonna be, you know, indie lines. It's gonna be and PowerCon again is fantastic because it made me aware of so many small companies. Yeah, you know, I didn't know they were out there, but they were producing kind of like uh, artisanal action figures, you know, small mm-hmm. batches of figures that maybe feel like they could have been produced by Hasbro in 1985 or by Remco or something, something like that, you know? So you kind of get your hidden nostalgia in a different way, but something new, but like, you know, Hasbro's thing is they haven't created anything new in decades. Yep. They bought power Rangers, right? Um, yeah. And that, now they have the lightning line, which is their new premium power Rangers line to compete yeah. with, uh, well, you can't really compete with uh, Super 7's Ultimates. Uh, Ultimates are $55 a piece, and they're very detailed, very nicely put together for the most part. Uh, and But Hasbro's are going to be the same windowless box, $25 yep. a piece. It's just, how are you going to I'd rather pay the 55 and have it in a nice display case with tons of accessories than pay for a box with a, a rendered version of the figure and yeah. never be able to display it. What's the point? I've got Sergeant Slaughter and uh, from uh, Classifieds, and I've never opened them. I think he's in the box. There's something in the box because I, I rattle it, but like I have it on the shelf next to my other box Classified figures, and I'm like, I, I, I hope he's in the box. You know, I, I don't know. Like I said, it could be a bag of glass. It could be a bunch of nails. It could be the fridge. I, I don't know what's in that box. That's know? why Rondo was my last one because they started putting Snake Eye in the box and a couple others just in yeah, the yeah. The faceless box. I'm just like, nope, no, no. They're, they're no, they, on the wall to be displayed, not to just sit on a shelf like a book. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know, again, they, they can hide a lot of uh, a lot of defects, mm-hmm. and um, you know, when you're paying that kind of money for a collectible, you know, you can spring for a little freaking plastic window, so you know it, at least it's in there. Or I, you know, I love um, it was uh, the NECA, the the turtles toys yes. where they had it was like a book and you'd open it up my mm-hmm. son collects the godzillas and it's like oh this is nice you get that you know you get the like the movie poster or something then you open it up and you can still see the figure inside you know you actually bought an action figure and like I, you know i bought those power rangers toys and i'm like i never would pay that. i think they retailed for 25 bucks and i'm like i would never pay 25 dollars for these anyway but beyond that i couldn't even tell you what they were i like i picked up the box and i'm like i th- i think they're action figures but they also talk about how uh, all the Zords combine into a Mega Zord, and I'm like, now I don't know—is this just a solid, like an action figure, or is it, you know, uh, part of a static. bigger figure? Yeah. Is it static figure or is it uh, transformable? I have no idea. I have no idea. But for three ninety nine, I'm going to give it a shot, and that's basically what you know. And uh, it, it's ridiculous. It's, it's just—it's nuts. I don't think toys are that important to them. I really don't. No, and I'm trying to figure out why they're wasting. They're, they were so concerned about not using plastics, but then they produced the the retro Indiana Jones line mm. that's on a card with plastic, and they created brand new figures in that style that are just sitting on the shelves and no one's buying. And that's the about the amount of same amount of plastic they would use in like a Black Series or or the Lightning Series or whatever. So why are you investing so much money in the Neon Jones toys? No one's buying. No one cares about yeah. them. No one's going to pay $11 for what is really a crappy Indiana Jones figure. I bought one, and they didn't improve anything about it. What I always hated about those toys when I was young is they, were, they weren't they were rigid like the Star Wars figures were. Mm. The plastic that they used was very flexible. I had the German mechanic, and his legs over time just like looped. Because they were so oh, yeah, soft yeah, and so yeah. easily pliable that he just like split in half. 
and they used the exact same plastic. So when I took Indy out, I almost tore his leg right out when I was just taking him out of the package. And I was like, oh, this is as crappy as I remember. You didn't improve anything at all. <laughs> so I just you know, tossed it. Maybe, maybe that's why, maybe that's why they put them in the retro packaging because they know you're expecting shit quality. You, they know you're expecting an old looking action figure, but when you pay, you know, 25, 30 dollars for a collector's item and the paint app doesn't match what's on the box. It's missing the eyes, the you know, <laughs> missing it's freaking missing accessory. Okay. So that was that was the thing with uh Transformers with uh, you mentioned the the movie line, the 86 mm-hmm. Starscream. Yeah. I heard multiple people uh tell me that the 86 Starscream was missing parts, missing mm-hmm. fins, missing missiles, and again you don't know what you're getting until you open the box. And uh, there were reviews on uh, Amazon for it. And people said, you know, I thought I was buying a Hasbro Transformer. This is like some some Alibaba shit. And they're like, no, this is the Hasbro Transformer. You bought the Hasbro Transformer. They're like, the, the, the paint on the eyes isn't even lined up right. Like nothing, it looks like it was spray painted. And and they said, no, it's that that is a current year Hasbro Transformer. And I'm so sorry that this is the way you found out about it. And, um, you know, it's, I mean, they're, they're doing damage like to themselves, so many levels. It's like, you have the collector's market. That's like the only thing you have going for, for you as far as toy sales. So let's go out of our way to like antagonize and piss these people off too. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know if they care. I just don't, I, it just feels like they don't, they don't care. They don't, um, I don't know what they have to fall back on because even when Mattel screws up, they have they have two solid lines that are always going to carry them. They're going to have Barbie and they're going to have Hot Wheels. Yeah. When have you ever seen a Hot Wheels aisle ever shrink? Never. Even when I worked in retail in the '90s, it yeah. is still the same size and target. The yep. target I used to work work in, I still go to, and it, it's still the same. Nothing has changed. So, and same with Barbie. Barbie's still basically one whole aisle to herself. Those two lines never change, but everything else is so strictly IP based. Uh, fluctuates so much because a lot of people just stop caring. Eventually, I won't be surprised if Star Wars is totally out of stores or it's just regular, uh, it's just turned down to being just like the baby stuff or the young kid yeah. stuff. Yeah. Because right now at Target, there's two pegs, one dedicated to three and a half inch, one to um, Black Series. And mm-hmm. then just a couple, just a s- couple small parts on the lower shelves that are taken up either by plush Ewoks or plush uh, Grogu's. There's no vehicles. There's nothing. And it's at every Target I've gone to uh, to basically research for this. It's just it's it's sad. And if it goes out of the stores, I don't think anyone's going to care. I think that nobody I cares. Think, I think Star Wars has become so dead. I hate I hate having to say that as a longtime fan, but it's just, I don't see anyone besides older people. Oh my God. I can't believe I got to call us that now. Older, <laughs> older people, people in their forties and fifties, uh, that, that okay. care enough to actually spend money on it. But I mean, do you need 10 Landos regardless of which one it is? If it's, if it's disguised Lando or Bespin. Lando. Right. Right. I mean, they're not selling, but you put one Luke up there. It's usually one Luke per case. Oh, he's gone. Yeah. I had to go yeah, no. buy. I had to go buy the Mandalorian Luke, so I have a Luke to put on my skiff because I can't find the Return of the Jedi Luke anywhere. God, well, I should tell you there, you know what what people are actually buying, mm-hmm. and uh, you know they just keep doubling down. I think on on product that collectors don't want, average consumers don't care about. I mean, yeah, they had. I think Star Wars got a little bit of a bump from Grogu fever uh, for about two years, but. Um, you know, Hasbro, they blamed their dismal financials on Star Wars failing. I remember that was like 2018. They said the reason we came up short was we went all in on Star Wars and nobody bought it. You know? Right when, uh, right when uh, the last, not the last Jedi, I'm sorry, uh, Rise of Skywalker came out, their, their stock price was about 118 mm-hmm. Immediately following, going right into the beginning of 2020 before COVID really happened, it dropped to 71.50. Jeez. And then none of that product moved. I know it didn't because I watched it. <laughs> it's part yeah. of my job. I watched it just not move. No one wanted it. You had so many characters that play nothing into the movie. Like you got 10 characters, a whole bunch mm. of named characters. And like, I don't know who these people were. I can't remember them from the movie. I can hardly remember the movie. 
And then yeah, it's yeah. all in ollies now. Every single one of them is in ollies. I I thought it was really weird um, with Rise of Skywalker. You could see the decline. Like when The Force Awakens came out, they had massive hype. And they the toy aisles were as full as they mm-hmm. were because we had yep. Toys R Us back then and everything. And it was just like it was like the Phantom Menace all over again. It was like boom, like all kinds of Star Wars stuff. This is great. Star Wars is back, baby. We got all these new toys. We got a new Falcon. It sucks, but hey, we got a new Falcon. We got some play sets. We got whatever. And then you could kind of see, okay, well, that stuff didn't sell very well. So when Solo came out, you know, and The Last Jedi came out, you could see they kind of pulled back a little bit on the number of toys. And then by the time we got to the rise of Scott. Well, no, I'm, I'm sorry. We had a rogue one in there too. And we got a mm-hmm. pretty cool Walker out of that, but that was like the end of the big play sets. And then by the time we got the rise of Skywalker, it was like a handful of the new characters and some of the characters we knew were going to sell mixed in with original trilogy characters. And they were relegated to like an end cap. I remember they had like a, they had like an end cap and that was it. That was all the star Wars. It was like, Oh, there's some of those Dio, whatever droids, but we also had, you know, Ewoks in there and R2D2 for good measure. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Like, you could just see it just go, you know, and uh, people weren't buying it. I mean, it sat there for weeks. Actually, what they were doing is they were picking out the R2-D2s and the Ewoks, and they are buying those, my wife included. She bought, you know, <laughs> uh, bought an Ewok. But that the the new characters, those Dio's, they, they sat there for months, months. And they, they probably are at Ollie's now somewhere. And after they saw that decline, they still tried to do two Kickstarters or two crowdfunding campaigns that utterly fell on their faces. The Rancor, yeah. I, when I was covering it for Clownfish, I, mm. I thought it might get there. But then I saw what their, their stretch goals were, and I was like, this is garbage. You're charging, I think it was $300 for that thing, and you're not getting anything. You're getting a cardboard backdrop was their first thing. And then they yeah. tried to do, then they tried to backpedal and be like, oh, we're going to throw in some figures we already released, we're getting to you for free. Like, yeah. oh man, then that failed. And then when the the Reva lightsaber was announced, I was like, yeah, no, was, no one's going to buy that. this. Nobody <laughs> wanted that. Like, why? I mean, anyone could, you can buy any of the other Black Series lightsabers. They're much, they're, they're much cheaper. And I, I'm still laughing when I go into Walmart and I see just pegs of Reva. Yeah, just, it's, it, I was shocked though because now the um, now the uh, uh, lack of give a shit has reached characters that I thought would have sold. Again, when you've got pals of Grogu, which I guess you can you can kind of write off because they made so much Grogu stuff. Mm-hmm. But I went to Ollie's and I picked up a Luke a Jedi Luke Skywalker with an X wing. This was the um, I forget what they're called. They're not Galactic Heroes, but they're like somewhere in between. Yeah, uh, the like the two inch tall figures. Yeah, yeah, and they're they're pretty cute. I mean, they're 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 cool. It's twenty five dollars set I got for four ninety nine. Okay, we had Luke Skywalker being sent to Ollie's. Okay, that is that is that is like hit the panic button, right? A Jedi Luke, like you said, you can normally never find a Jedi Luke. A Jedi Luke with an X wing being sent to Ollie's for four ninety nine, mm-hmm. and he, he was there for a while. I think he was there for a while because it looked like they just dumped a bunch of this Mando stuff there last month or whatever. And uh, I was just like, I, I can't believe this. I mean, I it, the last time I remember seeing any Luke's on clearance anywhere was when Star Wars was dying in the mid-80s, and I wish to God I had a time machine. I remember seeing rows of Stormtrooper Luke mm-hmm. at KB Toys. And he was like a dollar ninety nine or something, and I didn't buy him because at that point I was already I was already out of Star Wars, and uh, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of cool. They finally got around to making a Stormtrooper Luke. That's weird. And that's all I thought. I didn't think about it. I'm like, my God, kid, go back and buy every single effing one of those figures off of that peg, and you sit on them for about thirty years. But at least then Kenner was trying because they they were going to make another line that followed up that was a sequel. Yeah, to- yeah. Jedi. So you, you had all these weird vehicles they were coming out with. Well, I still have all of them. They were great. They were just like they were just kit bashing stuff together and throwing it out yeah. there. It's like that, that's that's great fun, but toy companies aren't going to take that risk anymore. Well, I think that's where we're kind of at now with the, the crowdfunding. I kind of feel that you know for those legacy brands, if it's not little kids stuff, that they might just say, hey, you know, going forward, everything is is a la carte. You know, everything is being made to order. Um, and we're going to crowdfund it. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't work, then we just don't make it, you know, I mean, why, 
take the risk? Why dump millions of dollars into a product that's going to wind up in always if, other if than they, a tax write off? You know? Yeah. If they did another uh, Falcon, like they did with that 2008 Falcon, the big yeah. one that lots of detail, if they made it even bigger, and even if they charged three to four hundred dollars for it, it would get backed. Yeah. As long as you didn't stick stupid stuff in there, if you didn't like say, oh, well, this is the version from uh, The Force Awakens or whatever with that's mm. with the stupid dish or whatever. If you if you make it even bigger and you charge people out the ass for it, they'll buy something that's OT, yeah. but nothing else. Uh, but when it comes to the Hasbro lab stuff, I have my own issues and it's sitting right there that I backed it. I backed it on the first day. There were a lot of promises made. Even Adam Savage, when he reviewed it, there were promises made during that video that when it, when it arrived, I was so let down. I had to put a special chip in this thing to have it run for more than 90 seconds. It's made with a built-in timer to shut off at 90 seconds. So if you're wearing this at a con, you got to start and start it back up, start and stop it like every 90 seconds. Like right, that's right. the point. So you actually have to go and mod this thing. And if I wanted to mod it to look like an 84 pack, I've got to do so much uh, modification work just, just to the aesthetics. I got to take all the stuff off that they originally told us was going to be easily removable to make an 84 right, pack. Right. But it's not. There's stuff that's just hard molded on there from Afterlife. And there's other there's issues with the hose connection and just for four hundred dollars, yeah, it was three nine, yeah, it was three nine nine, I believe. For that that price, there were just so many little things that they cheaped out on. And when I reached mm-hmm. out to Hasbro, I was like, "You promised us we would get these chrome edge stickers, so we can have right. a brand new eighty four looking pack." What you sent us was a cheap printed at home bunch of stickers. They were they were kind of blurry. They, they weren't Chrome at all. They're like, oh, yeah, well, we made some promises and some things had to change. Sorry. You, you going to fix it? Never heard nope. back. They got your money. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for the money. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, Shareholders are, are very happy with, with your money. Um, yeah, so I think I think they're, they are kind of cheaping out of that kind of stuff. Like, I'm starting to wonder now, like, are these companies in, in Mattel, too? Are they, like, crowdfunding to, to stay afloat? Like, we're going to we're going to get as much money from because you start mathing it out and you're realizing these campaigns are like millions of dollars it's mm-hmm. like, and it's like so okay so we take that and yeah normally we'd spend you know 120 bucks or something to make this 400 dollar item but now nah, we're going to spend like 30 dollars make some piece of shit as long as they get something as long as they get something and oh we tried that's okay we're just gonna pocket more of that cash because god knows we need it you know um, I don't Mattel's know. trying it with that Jurassic Park gate, two ninety nine for a motorized gate that comes with a version of the the Ford Explorer that they've already released. They just added a couple more details to it. Yeah. So you're paying for a gate. <laughs> you gotta you gotta have five thousand backers at two hundred ninety nine a pop. That's that's a huge chunk of change for a motorized gate, something that you would have seen come out in ninety three. Yeah. It's yeah. nothing special. It's nothing detailed. It's not. It, I I really don't get it. I don't get where this. I don't know if it's the cost to put it together. It can't be research and development because it's just a gate. <laughs> it's just a motorized piece of plastic. Oh. It, I mean, I know the tooling's expensive. I know, but like you said, they're reusing parts. And doesn't it come with like an electrocuted kid too? It comes with. You have to. I think that's. Uh, I think that's seven thousand backers. Okay. You'll get you'll right. get that and you'll get electrified Tim, but. At ten thousand backers, <laughs> you get you get Lex and a goat. If it reaches ten thousand, you get a tiny figure and a goat. And a goat don't they have the goat leg too or something? Yeah, you can throw yeah on the, the, the goat's leg is removable. It's like Jeez, that's, oh God. that's not a that's not a selling point for me when you're when your highest tier is three dollars worth of plastic. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. It's um that's kind of a mixed bag. And Mattel, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother issue we're going to mm-hmm. talk, I think, about in another another episode. But um, I think with Hasbro, you know, beyond the Star Wars issues, beyond the, the issues with the, the uh, collectors, uh, could, could, can we talk about where they're at with their politics? Because I think that is that is another that is another issue. Hasbro, look, they've been pretty heavy-handed with the uh, the left-wing politics. I mean, we've got non-binary transformers now. 
having a little speech in the, the new show, which I thought was really freaking weird. Like, look, back in the 80s in the Marvel comics, the Transformers did not have genders. There's a whole issue. I remember as a kid with the Pretenders trying to explain to this alien chick who was hot for, I think it was Cloudburst, and she was hot for him. And he's like, yeah, I'm a robot. Like, I don't have a dick or anything, so mm, this isn't going to work out. But fast forward to current year and we've got a show on Nickelodeon where it's like, hey, yeah, let's have a two minute conversation about uh, proper pronoun usage for Transformers. And I'm like, that's it's a little weird. So I, I got to wonder if on and this is this is hardly the first example. And then you get into Wizards of the Coast and they, they get very political, too. And that's a whole nother issue. But like our parents looking at this. Oh, then we had the potato head thing. Let's not forget about the potato head thing. Uh, so our parents looking at this and being like, yeah, we're just not going to buy Hasbro toys because I don't know what, what we're supporting. Frankly, I don't know what we're supporting. Kids aren't into it. And I'm watching these shows and I'm like, what the hell's going on here? And I just, we're not going to buy. We're not going to buy Hasbro. Oddly wow. enough. Just a theory. I yeah. I, I haven't encountered the, the political stuff as a parent. Um, I live in Florida, so we all know what's going on in Florida right now. Yeah, um, yeah. But as far as the toys go and and kids shows, thankfully my kid more likes just watching people play um, play Five Nights at Freddy's on YouTube right now. Yeah. So I think I've Good escaped. Wholesome. I've escaped that whole yeah uh, <laughs> socio political discussion I have to have with uh, with children's television. But they're they're courting a market that I don't think exists for their product yeah it, it's not to it, it's not to be harsh on people that identify this way but they make up such a tiny tiny part of that customer base i don't know why they chase it so hard especially when toys and entertainment is supposed to be escapism i don't want to feel like i'm watching twitter being injected into everything i have to deal with I don't yeah. want it in my games. I don't want it in my. I don't want it in my entertainment. I, I leave Twitter for Twitter. <laughs> yeah, right. And that's where it uh, should stay. So, I mean, here's an example of it. You know, kind of the Twitter mentality creeping into the real world when it comes to Hasbro. And this is beyond Wizards of the Coast. That's a whole other. That's a whole other issue, right? Uh, one of the weirdest video clips I have seen in relation to Hasbro was actually, I think it was Geeks and Gamers had it, and it was a convention where they were talking about GI Joe. And it was the audience, mostly 40, 50 something year old men. And the marketing lady from Hasbro would not let them speak to the toy designers until they gave their pronouns. I, I kid you not. Like I thought they were overreacting. I thought it was a joke. I watched the clip. I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Like most of these guys are probably military and they're probably thinking to themselves like, bitch, please. What does it look? What does it look like? I am. You know, why do I have to you, qualify myself to ask a question? Right, right. You weren't allowed to ask a question of the designers until you went through Hasbro's gatekeeper and and she was going to you know ask what your pronouns were. And I thought that was really freaking weird. And I'm like, <laughs> this look, if you're courting another audience, I can tell you in the G.I. Joe classified uh, room, they are not here. That audience you're looking for, they're they're definitely not in this audience. So I don't know what you're doing, why you're doing it. If you just, you know, what the deal is, but I think she was some millennial marketing gal. And I was like, God, talk about being tone deaf. I mean, seriously, my, my pronouns seriously. are yo, Joe, bitch. I'm yeah. Right. I mean, I was like, I, I was, I that fell on my chair. I was like, God, this is, and then we had, uh, we had the guy who worked at Hasbro who came out and said that, you know, they definitely have, have gone all in on, you know, agenda and all that. And I don't know if it's just, you know, the employees that they're hiring. Uh, like, you know, we said before, if they're looking for new markets, they're thinking, you know, uh, hey, there fellow kids, we're going to use all the, the Twitter terminology. And this is how we're going to get these broke 22 year old baristas to, to buy our toys, you know, because I'm like, it doesn't even like the logic doesn't even make sense. Like the people you're courting, a lot of them, they have no desire to have children, right? I, I don't. I don't think a lot of them can afford children. I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not trying to be that guy. But seriously, and you're going to uh, uh, chase that audience and chase off the parents, the collectors, the people with the disposable income. I, I just don't understand the logic. I, I really don't understand what's going on over there. If you want to, if you want to court that audience, 
totally go ahead, but do it with something brand new. Create yeah, something from yeah. the ground up where it doesn't feel like you're injecting it or you're pandering to these people. Create something that they can latch onto that is organic. I don't know how you would do that when it comes to identity. I I really don't know what IP you create that's going to hit hit a home run for an audience that is perpetually angry about everything. <laughs> you, you can't you can't make something that for people that are going to be offended if you include something or if you don't right, include right. something you either have to hit every single check mark but if you hit one one check mark too many they're gonna they're gonna light you on fire on social media and you'll you'll fire somebody over it over a fire over a, a barn fire that lasted one week you're yeah, you know, someone's career. <laughs> they they tried uh, they tried selling Steven Universe toys. This wasn't Hasbro. This was actually I think McFarlane. McFarlane really? tried selling Steven Universe toys. They had uh, like Lego sets, and there were some action figures and little blind bags and stuff like that. And they were on clearance within a couple of months because that audience. I mean, we can argue whether or not the show was popular. Mm -hmm. uh, it definitely has a fan base, very mm -hmm. vocal fan base, but yeah. they're not they're not people who buy toys. You know, for the most part. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's at cons. You see plenty of people dressing them for them at cons, but I, I don't know what you would create for them. I mean, you can make action figures, but it's not really a show where you're going to be smashing. Well, maybe you're trying to fuse <laughs> figures together. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's it's like I you know I don't know I don't know. It's just a weird because again, you know, this comes back to like Hasbro. They haven't really made anything new. Uh, I'm thinking what Beyblade, maybe is that Hasbro? That was how long ago was that? <laughs> that was, yeah, like it used to be. Remember back in the like it was a good time to be a kid back in the 80s, visionaries had, and mask, and and a lot of them failed, you know, mm -hmm. air raiders. Remember air raiders? Oh, yeah, yeah, but but they tried new things, they were always trying to innovate because again, their business was to sell toys, and they realized, like, hey, uh. GI Joe's getting a little long in the tooth. We got to have a backup. Transformers not selling as well as they were a couple of years ago. What's next? You know, and now it's just like, no, we're just going to keep going back to the same well over and over and over and over again. We're just going to make the toys uh, more expensive year after year after year after year. And these chuds are going to buy them. You know, they're going to bitch about it online, but they're still going to come back and they're going to buy them until they don't. And then you start to see the toy sales decline and you start to see the stock decline and people just kind of get fed up with it. And then they're they're like, okay, well, that's fine. Uh, we've got Wizards of the Coast. We've got Magic the Gathering and D&D. &D. Oh, yeah, hey, we just pissed all those people off too um, with the OGL debacle, which we've talked about at length. And also, yeah, send in the fucking Pinkertons to a guy's house because he got a case of cards early. That didn't go over very well, and that's the audience they're courting. I hate to break it to you, but that, that progressive audience, yeah, they really don't like the Pinkertons. <laughs> Not a good look for you, Hasbro. So, yeah, they're getting it from all sides now. And I, I'm like, at what point do they just farm everything out? They're already doing it with basic fun. Like all the all the reissue uh, My Little Ponies. My wife was collecting, she can't really afford to collect them now, uh, the, the uh, gem dolls mm -hmm. from Integrity Toys. Yep. They were like $150 to $200 a piece. And it's like, yeah, it was fine when they had a couple. And now there's like... Uh, but it's like nobody can afford these damn dolls. But it seems like they are outsourcing a lot of their classic IP to other toy companies that actually want to make toys. Again, all the, the classic ponies, they were doing strawberry shortcake for a while. You know, how long? Uh, Super 7's doing G.I. Joe. I mean, they're not great, mm -hmm. but they're doing G.I. Joe. So at what point does Hasbro say, fine, we own all these IPs. We're going to be a license holder or whatever. They want to make toys. They want to stick their necks out and they want to get, you know, they want to take a risk and try to figure out the market that we we lost track of. They can go for it. We'll just sit back and we'll license We'll license you G.I. Joe. We'll license you Transformers. You want to do My Little Pony? Cool. You can do My Little Pony. Just send us a check and we don't have to deal with it. You I know? can see I can see Super 7 filling the void for a lot of these IPs if they were to take their Ultimates line and basically cut the production cost in half, bring them down to $20, $30. Don't include as many, don't include soft goods, don't include as many accessories, but just make a solid product. Just make a solid figure that can be displayed. 
And I think that would solve the problem with both Transformers, maybe not for actual transforming Transformers, but yeah, articulated Transformers like they did with um, with their Ultimates line. I mean, there's no. I bought my I bought my brother the uh, the Optimus Prime figure, and he, he was amazed by it. It was like, oh, it came with a surfboard. It's like, yeah, it's odd, but I mean, it's something it's something that Hasbro wasn't trying to do. Hasbro right, wasn't right. wasn't trying to chase that like, oh yeah, these G1 fans really want to see him like with a basketball. You know, but Super Seven will do that. Yeah. And but if Super Seven could cut down their production costs a little bit so people aren't like their eyes aren't bulging out of their heads when they see their fifty five dollar figures, right? They could they could nail that collectible market and they only produce the toys for most of them, the toys that are sold. They don't they don't flood the market with them because they can't afford mm-hmm. to. They're still a relatively small company. Yeah. So if they if they went that line and they did that with G.I. Joe, Transformers, and Star Wars. I think we could have another collector's renaissance, and I think we would see a lot better Star Wars figures, ones that people yep. actually wanted. I would pay fifty-five dollars for Han, Luke, and Leia done in the Ultimates line. I would pay that much if they did them in the Nelvana Christmas special style. Yeah, I would. That love, would be I would cool. love to have those. <laughs> yeah, that would be. Cool. That's one thing I liked about uh, the Ultimate, the GI Joes, was they had the these. Uh, cartoon versions of the characters mm-hmm. you know yeah. and it was really cool to see because hasbro just and occasionally they'd throw us a bone here and there you know but for the most part they didn't really care about the really obscure characters but like super seven's like oh yeah cool yeah that guy that was in that one episode of that miniseries mm-hmm. for like 30 seconds yeah he gets a figure he gets a figure well they're know? throwing ex- accessories yeah. that were only p- for one episode but we still yeah. can't get a hooded cobra commander that's still no. <laughs> uh, I my understanding is that from the top down, it's it's too dicey to do hooded cover commander. Uh, freaking bizarre. I mean, it's it's just bizarre. It's like it's blue. The hood is blue. And he's evil. And it's he's a bad trying, guy. He's not a good, he's not a good guy. He's not a let's, good guy. Let your right? villains be villains. Not every villain needs a redemption story. Let Cobra no. Commander be a a loser, but an evil loser. <laughs> You know, I, I don't know. I don't get it. But uh, yeah, I think a lot of collectors are looking for alternatives. I mean, I, I brought these up before. This is my um, my Transformer replacement or Beast Box toys. Uh, I'm showing one right now, but they're basically animals that turn into uh, blocks, but they're really detailed and uh, they're just really cool to look at. And I've been picking these up and my kids have been buying them for me. I just love them. I mean, it looks like something that they would have done in the eighties or nineties, mm-hmm. you know, to try to, and, and you just don't see this kind of like, look, they know transformers fans are going to be about this. They're going to get that market, but it's also something new. And I think that's what we're going to see more of from, from the independent companies is, you know, it feels familiar. It feels like it could have existed back then. Um, or it's, it's, you know, adjacent to something you're already collecting, but it's not just like, we're not just making knockoff Transformers or something. We're something digging, digging to the obscure lines. Like, they tried to bring Battle Beast back uh, years yeah. ago. But do it again. So guys are... Try something obscure. Try Visionaries again. Uh, any Anything. The, uh, yeah. Not in, was it Inhumans? What was that? Inhumanoids. Like? Yeah, Inhumanoids. Inhumanoids. Yeah. Uh, that I would look if they did Haslab, if they did the uh, the actual humanoids, if they did like a freaking decompose, it was like three foot tall mm-hmm. or something. I, I'd, I'd buy it. I would, you know, my wife might disagree, but I would I would pay three, three to four hundred dollars for a heavily articulated decompose. He was like one of my all time favorite action figures. And I, I wish to God I, I never sold them, but we needed money. We first got married. We had like massive collections and yeah. I had everything from when I was a kid and I sold decompose, but he was this giant like skeleton thing. And you put the action figures inside his rib cage and it felt a little gushy and stuff. But yeah, they were like innovating back then. Like they had guys that would just sit around and be like, come up with some ideas, you know, come up with these crazy ideas. You look at like, you know, on Mattel's side, like how he man was created. They have a graphic novel coming out about how they created he man. Mm-hmm. You know, the, all the ideas they come up with. And that's what they used to do. They used to, you know, Hasbro used to have think tanks. Uh, you watch the toys that made us and you see the stories about how they literally would be tasked with coming up with new toy lines, constantly coming up with new stuff. And there isn't that. Like Hasbro needs to have Imagineers or something, you know, working there, coming up with new ideas. But I don't think they care. I really don't think they care. Uh, and so many of the, so many of the unique toy lines that we see now are so 
gimmick based. I mean, more so in the eighties, they were heavily gimmick based. Oh, yeah, everything, yeah. everything had a gimmick. But right now, there's so many disposable toys that are being produced by everyone, not just Mattel and Hasbro. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's making like, like for the longest time, Target had this line of of poop dolls or poop figures. Yeah, yeah, they did. And then, yep. and then they had those skeletons that you would you'd have to chip out of the uh, little blocks of uh, mm-hmm. blocks of uh, sand. It's like these, they're great, but there's you kind of just make them and then you don't do anything with them. You don't have a series to go with them. You don't have a story to tell with them. You're yep. just throwing ideas out there and just hoping they stick or or stick around long enough to sell out. And then you can just kind of write the rest off. There's no one's trying to build build a brand with a toy first anymore. No, and that was I mean that was kind of uh, Mattel and Hasbro's thing back in the eighties, and mm-hmm. you know for all all the complaining people do about. Uh, TV shows based on toys. They're just giant toy commercials. We're still going to see Transformers movies. We're mm-hmm. still talking about He-Man. You know, My Little Pony is still somewhat popular, right? Those those brands are still around because they become larger than just a toy brand. They've become, you know, again, story-based characters. Uh, these characters have lasted for decades because they had stories. If they were just robots that turned into cars... And there was no story and you didn't you weren't invested in the Autobots and the Decepticons. I don't think Transformers would be around. They would have it's like nobody would care. You know? It would be like what happened with Diaclone in the late 70s and early 80s. It's, it was the same as Transformers it was made by Takara yeah. Tomy. But Diaclones faded out of existence, even though they were the superior toy. And they're coming back now as reimagined. Yeah, yeah they're cool. They, yeah, they just the couple that I have, that I still have. They're great. But there was nothing to go along with them. There was there yeah. was no story to to put that seed in a kid's mind to build and want to collect more of them and ha- and actually have that playtime and having adventures with them, which I think is just I think it's totally devoid because we are we have so much to choose from. Yeah. That what what is really left for imagination? Yeah, I I agree. I agree. I think that's a that's a big problem. So I think um, that's a good place to wrap up. Uh, so tell tell everybody where they can find you, Mike. Tell tell us what you're collecting first, and then uh, <laughs> tell people where they can find you. Right now, I'm 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 collecting uh, obscure model kits. Like uh, you can see, I got Hal behind me. He was a model kit. I'm currently building a, a Japanese made uh, Mach Five, which is better oh, cool. than the Polar Lights ones that came out. Uh, basically, model kits. I've got almost all of Polar Lights' uh, Batman up there on the uh, Batman sixty six line up there. I just, model kits right now are the thing because I can make them my own. I can add all my washes. I can do all the artistic stuff I want to. And that's that's where my collecting is right now. Something that I can make my own. Uh, you can find me at Clownfish TV and at PiratesandPrincesses dot net, uh, or you can go to you can go sixcents dot com s y x x s e n s e dot com, and that's where that's where I am. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Again, this is uh, uh, Neon from Clownfish TV. And please subscribe wherever you found this. We, God knows we need the subscribers on the audio side of things. So uh, do that if you want more commentary. Leave a comment. Uh, tell us what kind of podcast you'd like to see. Again, we want to have longer conversations uh, talking about pop culture. And that includes everything. That's you know We're talking toys, comics, movies, video games, uh, role-playing games, any kind of nerd shit you can think of. We want to talk about it here. So let us know what you're looking for. If any, you'd like us to have anybody on, let us know see what we can do all right hey thank you very much mike for coming on thank you it's been a pleasure